Hey everyone, it's Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron of That Church and we're so grateful that you've come along with us today and here we're in Romans 16, the last book of the chapter. Of, of the, the chapter, chapter of the book. <laughs> <laughs> the last chapter of the book. That always is fun to see where my thoughts are going, right? <laughs> so in this, I just want you to, to start off in prayer with me mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of get right into it, all right? Yes. Yep. Just like always, Lord God, we do, we thank you for always showing up and teaching us your word, showing us what your intent was in, in each one of these chapters, that we could see what you're doing, what you're prepared for us ahead of time. And we do, we thank you for teaching us, speaking through us, and speaking inside all those that will ever hear this right when they hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, has it been good to see Paul and what he's talking about, where he's headed? Remember, he's headed to Rome. He wants to go see them. Right, yeah. right. And in this, I want to go back and read in chapter 15, just just a couple parts of verses. So you you get some of that where, you, where he was at. Mm -hmm. and, and in 15, it says, May the God, may the God of your hope so fill you. Isn't that good? You are filled with hope as you read and you find out what God wants for you. That's All right? true. I you am. see that? You see that? Yeah. And then in, in 20, he says, he says this about himself. He says, and thus my ambition has been to preach the gospel. Not where Christ Christ's name has already been known, lest I build on another man's foundation. So he was an evangelist, mainly. Mm -hmm. And here, he even gives, in chapter 16, he goes into and, and gives you a view, his view, on what he has talked about in this whole book. Really, in this, this is just the summation of everything. Remember, we were talking about righteous living, righteous, righteous living in various relationships, right? Right. Because we're all in relationships. Right. In each one of our relationships, how do you live and how does it look to live in righteousness? And that's what this whole book has been talking about. So as we go through this, let's, let's watch. And then there's, there's several things we're going to kind of do as part of this. Okay, here we go. Now, I introduce and commend to you our sister Phoebe. Okay, so just, just to start off, what is he doing with Phoebe? He's promoting Phoebe. He's saying here, as Phoebe comes to you, when she get, reaches you, receive her. Yeah. She has been a help to me. She has been this and that. And what is Phoebe? It's, it, she, it's, <laughs> it's said that she's a deaconess. But even in that word deaconess, it's really a minister or, or somebody that is entrusted with the, 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 the thoughts word. and the word and, and, and the views of, of Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, about his anointing. So how do you picture his anointing? And that's what I want you to think about as we read through this. All right, here we go. And that's cool because it shows that women were in ministry. Absolutely. Even then. It's just she was a deaconess. Absolutely. Not only a, a transporter of the word, but a deaconess in the church. Yeah, and, and it's it's good to mention even here, when, when we're talking about a, a woman that's a preacher and, and, you know, a minister of the gospel, there were all those that Jesus... In, in the scriptures makes mention of there's this woman, this woman, yep. this woman, yeah. this woman, this woman that are ministering of their substance, yeah. partners, yep. partners of Jesus's ministry, seeing to the promotion of that ministry, as well as they were witnesses in some of his ministry gatherings. And financially supporting a lot of what he was doing. Yeah, of what of what Jesus did in their lives, they would bring it forth. Mm -hmm. And that was an encouragement. That was a, a stepping off place far 
faith. Faith in the people hearing. Okay, let's keep going. Now I introduce and commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deaconess of the church at Centria, that you may receive her in the Lord with a Christian welcome, as saints, God's people, ought to receive one another, and help her in whatever matter she may require assistance from you, for she has been a helper of many, including myself, shielding us from suffering. Give my greetings to Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Okay, if you remember, they were kicked out of Rome and here gathered up with, with the Apostle Paul, right? And started ministering along with him. Mm -hmm. They obviously went to a whole lot of churches mm -hmm. together. And here, more than what's even stated. In each one of these cities, there were multiple house churches. Yep. But I, I, whenever he gets into a word down here in verse 5, it, it'll say in their house. But that word, is it their house? Or did they have a building of to, to have their ministry out of? You know, think about it. The synagogues were buildings that, that the Jews gathered in. Would they not do the same thing? It could be a church building. And it doesn't really stipulate. But this this chapter kind of goes into a lot of different things. But as we're going through, and he's going to start commending and, and, and talking about and saying hello, basically. You know, as this is read in each one of these churches mm -hmm. is who he's really talking about. Right, in Rome. In Rome. Yeah. Just in one place. And watch how many. It's just person, persons. Are, are the church in this person's house, but it's in each one of these. These are all ministers of the gospel. Witnesses just like you and me. Yep. Right? Taking, That's cool. Taking his anointing to their world. Right? Right. Okay. And so if he's never even been to Rome, yet he knows all these people in Rome. Right. So he met them somewhere else, and then they went to Rome. Right. They're traveling ministers. Here they would go and spread the gospel and go to these other churches and uplift these churches. And that's what he keeps on talking about himself. I'm, I'm sending word to you to uplift you, right? That I, that I have something good to bring, to, to, to spurn you along in your faith, right? Okay. Right. So verse 3. Give my greetings to Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus who risked their lives, endangering their very necks for my life. To them, not only I, but also all the churches among the Gentiles give thanks. Remember me also to the church that meets in their house. Greet my beloved Eponidas, who was a first fruit, first convert to Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who has worked so hard among you. Remember me to Adronicus and Junius, my tribal kinsmen, and once my fellow prisoners. They are men held in high esteem among the apostles who also were in Christ before I was. Hmm. Remember me to, so in other, in other translations it says, give my greetings to, when he says, remember me to. Yeah. Um, Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my dear Stachus. Greet Apelles, that one tried and approved in Christ, the Messiah. Remember to me those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet my tribal kinsman Herodian and those in the Lord who belong to the household of Narcissus. So, you understand why I'm having her read it all. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get through these words and these names of people. Wow. Thank God. We are living in a land that the names are a little bit easier than that. Yes. For me. <laughs> and you, obviously. But look at this. He's talking, like I was saying, he's talking to this minister of the gospel and this person. Mm -hmm. Here he even mentions the first person that through my ministry was born in Asia. That's cool. Born again, right? Yeah. And so each one of these are witnesses. Church possibly pastors 
uh, and it says of the household of this and household of that. Mm -hmm. Well, those households, you'll hear in, in some of this, and actually uh, it, it gets into uh, 1 Corinthians, where it's talking about those households were possibly the churches of that pastor. Okay? Oh, yeah. Because it, it gets into talking about, one says I'm of Apollos, and one right. says I'm of Paul. And, right. And he was like, I never baptized any of you. Except for this and that. Right. Yeah. Of Ste the house of Stephanaeus. Was that the, the prisoners, you know, the oh, the head right. of the prison? Right. Right. That was Ephesus. Right. And here you see all this. He's he's talking to pastors and those of that, that what is that called? A, a community of believers or yeah. an assembly. Yeah. Right? Which is a family. That's what we have. That church is a family for you to belong to and be supported by, right? And loved by. That we can share one love from one to the other, right? Okay. Also, another thing, when, you, when you're when you seeing all these people um, in the Passion Translation reading it, it talks about almost every person that makes mention of them. And it says... This one was one of the 70. This one was perhaps one of the 70. The 70 followers of Jesus that were with him all that time back before before Paul was even Paul. He right. was Saul Re and he was persecuting. Remember, the 12 was sent out first, mm -hmm. and then there was 70 others that Jesus sent out, Yeah. right? That ministered healing and brought the good news, the gospel, to them, right? Right. And you and I are in that other group that was sent out by Jesus. All of us. Now ye go and take this anointing. Take this being the witness of the good things from God. Right? Right. Okay. And uh, also, when you think about that, Paul was Saul. He was persecuting. Right. And so now these people are his friends. There had to be some <clears throat> big healing and relationships going oh, on yeah. you know they would have had to forgive him they would have had to trust right. god with that and jesus right. said to forgive he preached it and they would have been there they would have heard that yep. so just imagine you you know you think you have to forgive some tough spots think of these people and now how beautifully god has repaired those relationships and, and i want i i think it's good to mention this here you know how paul persecuted the church right well, did he then feel, and here, out of the way he was born again, it said, you know, there's certain things you're going to have to suffer. Was he suffering? Did he first, at first thought, suffer that that uh, railings that he would he would receive from different things and beatings and stonings and all yeah. that stuff? Was he taking that on as he thought he had to bear that? Because, gosh, he he cruelly persecuted and, and uh, man, was rough on the church. Yeah. Did he think he had to have that? And, you know, Jesus bore all of that. If Paul had to bear it for what he did, that would mean Jesus bore what he bore for us. And it was it was needless. It wasn't needed. Jesus bore it all. Don't ever forget, Jesus bore everything for what we could have ever done wrong, which means we go free. Right, and he had to too. He was preaching it about righteousness and grace and that free gift. And you know, those that are forgiven of much, love much. Mm. And I think that's what drew him in closer and closer. And he got revelation, direct revelation from Jesus. And that's really what you've seen through this. And, and here he's given ministry helps to all of us. And, and so much more. There's so much that you can glean out of this. But remember to separate the, the persecution away and to Jesus. Not that you have to receive that. But here, you will be persecuted. But what does that look like? Look through the scriptures. Look through Psalms and Proverbs 
about that. What does that really look like? And, and realize what, what happened to Jesus, everything except for that end, really, is what you are supposed to walk in. Protection, right? Jesus walked in protection everywhere until it was time to offer himself up. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Jesus wants you to know it's all right. Everything's all right. And he's right there with you. No matter what you think you have to go through, he is your deliverer. He is the one that makes what you have to bear so much easier than your previous life mm -hmm. before you knew him. Right. All right? Yep. All right. Yep. Yep. Verse 12. Salute those workers in the Lord, Tryphania and Tryphosa. Greet my dear Persis, who has worked so hard in the Lord. Remember me to Rufus, eminent in the Lord, also to his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Isn't that awesome? He had mothers in the Lord that were working in his life, bringing, bringing words of life to him whenever he was going through all of this, helping him, helping him see what Jesus did. Because when you are, are loving toward other people, they can see how Jesus can be loving toward them. Mm -hmm. You're an example of Jesus. You're an example of the Father, His love pouring forth. That's why He poured forth love into you, so you can go out and love others with it. Exactly. All right. Greet a syncretus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermes and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philologus, <laughs> Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy, consecrated kiss. All the churches of Christ, the Messiah, wish to be remembered to you. So he was taking, not only was he greeting the Romans, but the churches he had been around were together with him greeting all these yeah. churches. Yeah. I appeal to you, brethren, to be on your guard concerning those who create dissensions and difficulties and cause divisions in opposition to the doctrine, the teaching which you have been taught. I warn you to turn aside from them, to avoid them. For such hold on, hold on. I want to. Okay. Since since you came to avoid them, how is it that you can be in the world and avoid the world mm -hmm. and still be a witness to them and and love on them and bring the gospel to them it's is it's not coming together in in that statement but here you're avoiding what he was telling you you're gonna avoid it you're not gonna go into these places of worship and worship along with them no he's saying avoid those things avoid these things he kept on mentioning through there there's a right way of living and that's what this whole, a good portion of this book was about, about various relationships that you're going to have. You can't separate yourself. You come out and be separate, but you don't separate completely from them. You're supposed to have friends that are non-Christians so they can hear about the gospel, see God moving and working in your life that he, through you, can touch them. Right, right. Right? But probably not something that you want to spend hours and hours with them. Exactly. You know. yeah. So you can have friends and friendships, but you don't go into those same practices and those, those things that they get into that is not right to live by. Right? Like what, what Paul was saying. If something's going to hurt uh, a, a weaker Christian that's a right. friend of yours, and here you go out and start doing it with these so-called friends, that's not right. That's not righteousness. Working in and living in that place of righteousness. But you can still be friendly toward them and not get into the junk that they're getting into. Right. All right? That's, you, you got to navigate that, but living before God 
and praying about what you're supposed to do in the relationship that you have with these people, praying for them, and that the, a door of utterance be opened for you to speak into their lives. That's what you're there for. And then if they choose not to have you as a friend, that's a whole nother thing. But you be there available at their dark hour that yeah. they can call you and have you come and pray for them or pray for their baby or pray for their child, pray for their circumstance that they've gotten themselves into doing this lewdness, right? Yeah. Be a friend. Be there. Just yeah. Be there. You get it? Yeah. You can get it. Yep. You're getting it. For such persons do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites and base desires, and by ingratiating and flattering speech, they beguile the hearts of the unsuspecting and simple-minded people. For while your loyalty and obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, I would have you well-versed and wise as to what is good and innocent and guileless as to what is evil. That makes sense. He, he kind of backtracked there. He said you've got to be separate, but you've got to do this right and do it right before God, the one that you're loyal to. Right? Okay. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Where is Satan going to be crushed? Under, under your, your feet. feet. You're the body of Christ, right. right? Does that make sense? The anointed one is living in you. Remember Galatians 2.20, right? What does that say? <laughs> I know I always do this to you. Galatians 2.20. Is that the I am crucified with Christ? I am crucified Nevertheless, with Christ. I live, yet Amen. not I, but Christ yeah. lives in me. See how that just flows right out of your spirit? In the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of ah, God who loved me and gave now, himself for me. Now that's where we're living. We're living out of that connection. Right? Okay. Right. Okay. And the... Uh, just go ahead and read 30, 20 again. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, wishes to be remembered to you, as do Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, my tribal kinsmen. I, Tertius, the writer of this letter, greet you in the Lord. Isn't that neat? You see who actually wrote the letter. And he greets the people as well. Right? I wonder why Paul didn't write. I mean, not that I have an answer or I'm <laughs> asking for an answer. It just... There's ideas out Think there. About it. <laughs> he was having problems with his eyes at one period of time. Is what they thought, you know, the they being the the people that are looking back and reading these manuscripts and reading, you know, going and researching things. Is that why he was saying, you know, I would pluck out my own, you, you would pluck out your own eyes so that I could see. Mm, I you know, that. give give yeah. your own eyes if you could, right? Right. And here. They're, they're, they're taking the whole picture of all these different things and trying to piece it together. And does that matter? Not really. But just realize that the Holy Spirit... Let, let's, let's go back to this. The, the second part of 20 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, be with you. What is that grace? You can see it. Uh, he, he, by the Holy Spirit, prays out something in Ephesians 1, 9. And I believe it's Ephesians 1, 9, or maybe it's 15, somewhere around there. That prayer that, that he prays says, I'm praying for you. And then, you know, it continues kind of over in, in uh, chapter 3. And then it also in Colossians, you see him praying by the Holy Spirit for the believers. And that grace, remember, Jesus, he, he had, uh, Paul had this thorn in the flesh, remember? Yep. And God kept on saying, the answer is, my grace is sufficient for you. Remember, God always speaks the end result. This is, this is, this is what's already fixed it for you. You have to believe on this grace. That grace is God's ability to do anything. Right? And here, he later then says, after that thorn in the flesh event and that discourse, that he had deliverance from that by 
Matt Grace. Go and look it up. It's really awesome. But you have to rightly divide these things yeah. and see. That's why knowing these whole books by the picture of it, and that's what we're trying to get you is a picture of this book. And, and my wife's going to read some things to you that will help you see that even. Okay? Verse 23. Gaius, who is host to me and to the whole church here, greets you. <laughs> Go ahead. So do Erastus, the city treasurer, and our brother Cortus. The and, and here, I, the reason I kind of giggle is Gaius was that the chosen <laughs> used him as as the uh, you know one as of the, Matthew's guard. Matthew's guard, yeah, right? Yeah, on the series, the chosen. If you've seen it, <laughs> and we're doing a Bible study kind of off of that on Tuesday nights. If you guys want to come, it is really fun, and it's we get into some really neat things as as we pull that, that good information out mm -hmm. of that movie. Yeah. Is it all right? No. No. I wish it all was. But here, you see that the Word is truth. And we rely on the Word to view the good things out of that movie. It brings us right back to the Word every time, and it's relevant. It we does. always find relevant things in it to talk about. And to come up higher. And you know, it's, good. it's really neat to see Jesus in a different light. In a different way that you haven't really necessarily seen. Yeah. Some of these things being said by him, it really impacts you. And is it right? It's helpful. It's very helpful. But Sue, let's finish this up. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, be with you all. Amen. So be it. Now to him who is able to strengthen you in the faith which is in accordance with my gospel and the preaching of concerning Jesus Christ the Messiah, according to the revelation, the unveiling of the mystery of the plan of redemption, which was kept in silence and secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic scriptures is made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to win them to the obedience of the faith. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. Amen. So be it. And what's so good is that whole last little clip. Yeah. It, it is, I feel, mm -hmm. something that God was speaking directly to all of us. Mm -hmm. as, as here, it's obedience to faith. And here, throughout the, the whole Bible, it's, it's shown as a walk. Of faith just just the way Abraham did it he didn't physically see God but he walked not seeing God but believe in him believe in everything he he heard on the inside of him yeah God was speaking on the inside of him and sometimes it was years 10 12 years from time that God spoke to time that God spoke and he trusted God and moved along with him and that's what we're to do but we're we're we've got so much more we've got this word written down for us that we can we can judge the things that we do here on the inside of us and be that bouncer like I said taking captive right. every thought that's so good that you make sure that it's lining up with the word if it's not good cast it out let it be born still. Let it be stillborn. The thought. The thought. Yeah. But if you speak and you take that thought and you think about it so much that it starts coming out your mouth, that's when you've taken that thought. Yeah. And here, now it's in you. And now, if it's a bad thought, you have to get it out. You have to get it out like a weed out of a garden. Your spirit, man is the soil that you take the word and plant it in by meditation, thinking upon it. You take a scripture that, that God's saying to you and you say, all right, since I have this scripture, how does this, how does my life look like since this scripture has come into my life? That's taking it and, and letting it start to grow in you until it overwhelms everything in your life and then you can see 
the fruit coming from that plant, right? The fruit starts being born from what you say. We're just like God. We're speaking spirits that speak good things into other people's lives, and they glean that fruit off of our lives. And here, you're bringing testimony of his goodness. Yeah. A testimony of who he is. He's God's very son. He is God. He is God. He's the Holy Spirit. He is God the Father. They're three in one. And they live in you and want you to walk and reveal them to the world. Isn't that good? Yeah. So remember. That I have something I want to read. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered. Right. Okay. So since we're done with the book of Romans, what I wanted to do is go back and read the summary that we started with on the book of mm. Romans. Because it helps us remember what we were supposed to get out of that. Just a little part of it. And I think it really will help us to finish this off. The purpose of Romans. Paul wrote Romans to communicate the grand themes of God's grace and glory encapsulated in the gospel. No one comes into glory except by the grace of God that fills believers with his righteousness. Our clumsy attempts to please God and our works of religion are totally unable to make us holy. But God is so kind, compassionate, and gracious that he shares his righteousness with all who will receive his son, Jesus Christ. He causes his faith-filled ones to be made holy by his grace and glory. Paul wrote his letter to clearly articulate this message, to explain why he preached it, and to show how it should impact Christians in their daily life and community. So that is what the book of Romans was about. Wasn't that good to go back and yeah. have that kind of put together as a, really a nutshell about about it. I don't think I ever read a, uh, uh, a summary from the beginning at the end. It just, it just <laughs> God sent me back there and it makes so much more sense. Oh yeah, that's what I just read. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So remember that, that God, God loves you. you. And, and we, we love you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to, to your, your world, world with him. Find out <laughs> through the Holy Spirit what you're supposed to do and do it. That's right. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.